Journey Beyond Sodor, A Big Golden Book. It was a glorious day on the island of Sodor, and Sangri, rolled into Vicar's town on his way to the mainland, suddenly a signal failed. Screech! Henry tried to break, but he crashed into another goods train. <clears throat> Henry had to go to the steamworks for repairs. So Tom had decided that James would take Henry's cars. James was puffed with pride to be going to the mainland. That's a great job! What an adventure! J Thomas wasn't pleased. James always got the best jobs. And the red engine said he was Sir Topham Hatt's favorite. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. <clears throat> Early the next morning, Thomas went to Vickerstown Goods Yard and collected James's tracks. Soon he was on the bridge on the mainland. He was excited, but also oh, a little nervous. He didn't know how to, to find his destination, the Brillington Goods Yard. <coughs> On the mainland, he met Beresford. He met a crane named Beresford. Who goes there? Beresford asked. I'm Thomas. The blue engine peeped. Thomas asked for directions to the goods yard, but Beresford couldn't help him. He'd never been there. He could only go up and down on a small section of track and spin around. He was a very curious crane indeed. Thomas quickly steamed away. Later, Thomas rolled into the lonely engine into a lonely engine yard and <clears throat> filled with old machine parts. Heidi hi, pleased to meet you, tooted an engine named Lexi. A shy engine named Theo rolled up alongside her. Thomas had never seen engines like these. These. He asked what kind of aim they were. We're experimental, Theo peeped. It means we're different. Test. Who did Lexi? Test models, trial and error. <clears throat> Lexi and Theo had another friend named Merlin, but Thomas didn't see him anywhere. You won't see Merlin. <laughs> Lexi peeped with a chuckle. He's a stealth engine, designed to be hard to see, out of sight, invisible. Merlin can make himself invisible? Thomas gasped. Lexi laughed again. Well, let's just say he's always disappearing. <clears throat> With fresh coal in his hopper and a tank full of water, Thomas set off once more. It wasn't long before he rounded a bed and saw an amazing sight, a giant steelworks. I have a feeling we're not on soda anymore, said one of the troublesome trucks. <clears throat> As Thomas steamed into the steelworks, two huge engines rolled up. One was a big tank engine named Hurricane. The other was a diesel shunter named Frankie. Mm. Thomas asked if the, en if the engines knew how to get to Brillington. Of course, Frank said Frankie. But you mustn't worry about going to the goods yard tonight. Uncouple those cars. We'll take care of them for you, boomed Hurricane. Thomas released his trucks and went to tour the steelworks. Everything glowed up and sizzled as molten steel was 
poured into the mold. <clears throat> mm. Special machines and cars. There is whiz around him. This is the hottest place in town. Hurricane and Frankie tooted. When the tour was over, Thomas settled in into a comfy shed for a much needed rest. <clears throat> The next day, <clears throat> the next day, long before dawn, Frankie and Hurricane woke Thomas. They'd already taken his cars to Brillington. If my cars have been delivered, I need to head back to Sodor, Thomas peeped sleepily. But we helped you, little Tang Engine, Frankie tooted. Surely you don't mind helping us in return. Thomas agreed and spent the day shunting ladle trucks and transporting weight east from the furnace. It was hot and dangerous work. He couldn't wait to return to Sodor. But when he was done, Frankie and Hurricane wouldn't let him go. They said there was more to do, and they locked him in the steelworks. <clears throat> Meanwhile, back on Sodor, everyone wondered where James... Everyone wondered where Thomas was. It, James was especially concerned because he was tired of doing all his friends' work. I'm going to the mainland to find Thomas and bring him home, he said. That night on the mainland, thunder rumbled and lightning flashed. He used to cross the sky. Thomas knew he had to escape while Frankie and Hurricane slept. He rolled through the darkened steelworks and slowly building speed and slowly building speed and bashed through the gates. <clears throat> Thomas escaped into the dark woods. Are you hiding? a voice asked. I love hiding. I'm a stealth engine. Thomas couldn't see anyone but knew this was Merlin's voice. Don't worry, Merlin whispered. You're with the best hider ever. Thomas felt safe, and the big edges didn't find him. The next morning, Merlin was gone. <clears throat> as Thomas steamed toward Sodor, he met Beresford the crane again, just as Frankie and Hurricane came around the bend. Beresford quickly hoisted Thomas up and hit him. Just then, James rolled down the track and met Frankie and Hurricane. The three engines steamed away together. Thomas knew that he needed to save his friend. He also knew who could help. Thomas hurried to find the experimental engines and asked Theo, Lexi, and Merlin in to help save James. But we can't do anything, Theo protested. We can try, replied Merlin. This is the most excitement I've had in forever, Lexi tooted. <coughs> Theo and Lexi took a flatbed of filled with scrap and, and pretended there was an accident. While Frankie and Hurricane went to investigate, Thomas and Merlin snuck into the steelworks. James... Thomas peeped. We really, we really need to go. Oh, I'm more than ready to go, James puffed. This work doesn't suit me at all. Just then, Frankie and Hurricane returned. They chased Thomas. They chased James and Thomas into the fiery steelworks. Theo tried to help but he crashed into a control panel. A giant magnet suddenly swung out over the tracks and attached itself to Thomas. It lifted him up and carried him toward the last furnace. <coughs> Theo hit another button to release Thomas. He crashed, into the, he crashed to the ground and knocked over a vat of molten steel. A fiery puddle spread toward Thomas. Hurricane sped forward and shoved Thomas out of the way. Hmm. 
The little blue engine was safe, but the big engine's wheels had touched the boiling hot puddle. Help! Hurricane Steve. My front wheels! I'm mounting! Merlin quickly pulled Hurricane to safety, but Hurricane's wheels were damaged. He needed serious repairs. Without Hurricane's help, Frankie didn't know what she would do. I can't do anything. I can't do everything on my own, she said. Nobody wants to work here. Thomas knew some engines that might. The experimental engines saying they'd be happy to help. Happy to work at the steelworks. They liked being real and being useful and helpful. When they were back on Sodor, Thomas apologized for taking James's tracks. And I'm sorry I tease you about being Sutama Pan's favorite engine, James peeped. If anyone's the favorite, Thomas, it's probably you. <laughs> Don't be silly, James, Thomas peeped with a chuckle. <clears throat> they rolled into Tim and Sheds, where their friends were happy to see them again. Now there's a sight for sore eyes, Sir Topham had exclaimed. He was happy to have all his favorite engines back together again. The End